Well, it happened. Dice Throne's $1 million stretch goal right here is the Metal Curmudgeon token. How dare you, for one. For two, I feel personally attacked. And for five, you're going to get the five reasons you shouldn't back Dice Throne X-Men's with the Missions Edition. And for those of you who are new to this channel, don't worry, I'm not coming for Dice Throne. I really am not. I actually love, 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 love Dice Throne. I think it's such a phenomenal system. I think anybody who hasn't played it should try it at some point. It is very good. However, and it's a big however, I think I got that sentence right. Every time a campaign reaches over a million bucks, I am legally obligated by YouTube to put out a five reasons you shouldn't back to help quell the FOMO to make sure that you are equally excited when the game arrives at your door as you are right now clicking the back button. Because it's important, right? It is important when we're spending our hard-earned money, including the shipping costs, which honestly, Dice Throne, exemplary shipping costs as well. Love to see it. It's really important to take a step back, not let our excitement get the better of us, and truly analyze if this is going to be a good product for our gaming lifestyle. Hmm, I'll do that run through at the end. Ooh, what is it that I just thought of? I guess you're gonna have to wait and see. And I'll have you know, people who think I'm coming for Dice Throne and are protective of your little darlings, well, I met someone recently who said that my five reasons you shouldn't back Dice Throne made him back it even harder and become a Dice Throne volunteer. So you're welcome, Dice Throne. It's all thanks to me. Your whole staff I shall lay claim to. All because of this video series. But first off, before I get into five reasons you shouldn't back, I do want to talk about Dice Throne and why I love it. Because I do. I actively love Dice Throne. I purchased season one, the original season one, uh, on a, at a bring and buy. And I brought it with me to a contract. And I played it with some friends there. And we had such a friggin' blast. And it was one of those things of giving me that sensation of just, okay, let's just have one more game. Let's just have one more game. Let's, oh, let's just have one more game. And that was with the two intro characters. And as I went through Dice Throne and I saw all of the awesome characters that you can get, which might as well switch over here to see all the cool friggin' artwork as well. The ninja, the treant. Well, I've never played with them. The samurai. We're in season two right now. The tactician. The Huntress. Oh no, the more I look at this, the more I just want to get season two. Because <laughs> I don't have season two. Uh, I, I have season one. Let's leave it on the monk, because the monk's the friggin' bomb. Uh, I have season one, and I also have Marvel Dice Throne. And now, thanks to the good people at Dice Throne, I have uh, Santa and Krampus. Dice Throne is battle Yahtzee. That's what it is. If that term sounds exciting to you, then Dice Throne might be right for you. And so, of course, when I heard that Dice Throne was coming out with X Men, Marvel Dice Throne, the X-Men box, I was a fan. The fact that you can be Gambit in there, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Psylocke. I'm a fan of all of these characters. I'm a fan that Deadpool's in there. I'm a fan that there's a new mode that's even cheaper than the box of heroes to get you in to the game. I'm excited to what that co-op experience will bring that's different from Dice Throne Adventures. Uh, and I was excited about potentially getting the battle chest. There are a lot of great things about Dice Throne. I love the asymmetry of the characters. I love how quickly the games play. I love that it is dice rolling at its finest with great colorful art, a time that doesn't overstay its welcome, and all sorts of synonyms for the same things that I can just keep on repeating over and over again. But you're not here for that. No, you're here for me being mean and tearing down others' success like the curmudgeon that I am. And so I do believe that there is a way for Dice Throne not to be for you. And we're going to go into that right now with the five reasons that you shouldn't back Dice Throne, X-Men, whatever you want, this campaign of Dice Throne. And reason number five, and reason number five is if your primary gaming partner hates 1v1 dueling games. I love Dice Throne, but my girlfriend Renee does not. <laughs> and in fact, I love it so much that I was so excited to introduce it to her. I thought that she would love it as well. I thought that it would become this game that we could pull out and play quickly and just throw some dice and go back and forth and maybe get a whole ton of plays out of it. And I brought to her all of the Marvel characters. I wanted more of them. And I said, let's play. And we played some characters against each other. And we stopped after like, like three turns. And I was very sad. 
I was very sad, but I think that you have to consider that this is a two-player game. It is. There's a 1v1 mode and there's a 1 up to 6 mode. No, I will take the firm stance and anybody who plays Dice Drone will tell you it's a, it's a two-player game. That's why the Dice Drone Championships were 1v1. Even with the addition of this co-op mode, where maybe then you can play with four peoples, four peoples, four people, and I'll get to that in points four and three, I still think the optimal way to experience Dice Throne is at two players. Nothing that I have currently seen or experienced has ever convinced me differently. And I'm sure I've talked about that a bunch in other videos, so I won't harp on that now. So just trust me on it. And if you want, if you want more justification of that statement, if you think that statement is false, I'm happy to keep talk to you in the comments down below. But it is a 1v1 game. And therefore, you are going to play it with one other person. Generally, for me, whenever I go to a game night, I am meeting up with multiple people. And for my two-player games, I will play those two-player games specifically with my girlfriend Renee because she is sometimes around in the same vicinity as me and we sometimes want to play a game together. That, for me, is where my two-player games get the most play. And it is really, really devastating to me that she doesn't like Dice Throne because that is who I would play it with the most. And so I think you have to really consider, even if you are gung-ho about this concept, you need to see if the person who, are, who you're going to play this with the most, you're the person who you meet up with. It doesn't have to be a person who you live with. It can be, it can be your primary gaming partner. That's how I like to refer to them. Are they of equal interest? And I think if they're not of equal interest, then I don't know if there's a good enough justification of getting everything right now. So just flagging that in terms of sometimes our own enjoyment and excitement isn't enough because, well, we play games with other people, generally, other than solo modes, and oftentimes we need to bend to their opinions and wills slightly. So let's move on to reason number four. Uh, reason number four is that I don't believe the missions, Dice Throne missions, will change your opinion of Dice Throne. And what I mean by that, this new missions section, and they actually have a, a great video here. It's a 10 minute video that I highly recommend everybody watch. And you know what, that I'll play, that I might as well play in the background while talking about this, so you can see the cool, fun pictures. Will it be too distracting? It's gonna be too distracting. But even here it says Dice Throne experience required. I don't believe it will ever change your opinion on Dice Throne if you were just kind of cool on it and you thought, oh, well, maybe uh, my group isn't really into the head-to-head -head battling. Maybe they'll prefer a co-op adventure instead. And for some reason, you didn't get in on Dice Throne Adventures, which was the first co-op. Because what this basically is, well, it's Dice Throne. <laughs> Uh, the overview of what's going to happen is you're going to move to a place that's beside a static person on a board, and you're going to roll a bunch of dice and choose your attack and attack them. And then they're going to roll a pool of dice and activate different minions on the board depending upon what's been rolled. And I like that. I think it's going to be simple. I think the barrier to entry is really easy. I think they tell you a lot of rules minutia in the rule book or in the rules video, rather in a really effective way. And they tell you a lot of like small details, which makes me think that they're covering most of, if not all of the things that missions will bring to you. I think jumping on those little tokens is gonna be fun to get your own little boost. But for me, it's, it's gonna be the same flow. It, it doesn't feel like a revolution. It feels like a supplement. And it also feels like the type of thing where you will enjoy playing it, because you enjoy playing Dice Throne and not because you enjoy playing Dice Throne missions, if that makes sense. I think it's one of those things, if you have four people and you all love Dice Throne and you want to play it, but not in the regular way because that player count isn't optimal, I think this might actually be a nice supplement for that. I think you might be able to get together, you all chuck some dice, there's gonna be simultaneous play, all of that stuff, but I also just get the sense that it will never surpass its predecessor, right? It, it never will feel like its own sort of life blood thing. I feel like it'll feel like kind of a secondary campaign. And so I'm torn on missions, but for me personally, that, that is the thing that I was considering purchasing in this campaign. I was like, okay, I probably won't purchase the characters, but I'm really intrigued with this new mode, missions. I got to see the boards in person because they were out at WSBG when Dice Run was having their national tournament, which was super cool. 
But from what I've seen, I'm just not getting the feeling that it's going to hook me in as much as I wanted it to. And that also leads me to number three, which is also about missions. I wanted to do this video if there was going to be a focus, a little bit more of a focus on missions, because I feel like there is that existing content. And I guess I now have a, a very active love for Dice Throne and do need to talk myself out of it. Uh, the, the other thing that I am worried about and concerned about in missions is the replayability of them. That's number three. I don't know if missions is going to be as replayable as we may like. And I think the reason for that has to do a, a little bit with this w persistent perks thing, which I think is included to give you replayability and variability. Uh, is kind of like the little key to me that this will feel more like a campaign and more like a one-shot scenario. Well, the boards are static, so the villains on the boards... Let me see if I can get you some pictures of them. Yeah, the boards are static, so the villains on the boards won't move, right? They'll just stand there, and you have to navigate that that puzzle. And it feels like maybe a little bit more of a puzzle with a little bit of extra uh, dice rolling versus something you're going to pull out and replay and give you a lot of variability. The variability will come because of the dice rolling, but I don't see you ever returning to Cyclops a bunch. And I think the little perk pad, there's a shot of it, this right here is indicative of that. Because every time you beat a mission board that has a certain level of difficulty, you can scratch off a perk from that difficulty column or less. And then you can use those perks as you proceed through all the different boards, which is fun. Again, it gives it that campaign style, it gives it that progression, and these are applied to you instead of specific characters, which I think is really smart, so that you can just juggle your characters back and forth, you can play it how you want. But I also think that means to me that, ah, uh, there's not gonna be as much of a reason to go back. To be fair, maybe there will be, maybe because there are six, eight, nine, ten-ish on the first difficulty level of things you can scratch out, maybe you're going to have to play that ten times, right? Maybe you're going to have to play the one board ten times so you can unlock all your perks. I don't know how uh, entertaining that would be. I think the where the entertainment will come from will be in these 12 different boards, these 12 different bosses, uh, and the allies that pop up and give you one-time abilities which are fun because we get more characters in there, characters that we don't have in the big X-Men box, but I also don't think we'll play that huge an effect. They're really like one-time abilities, right? They, they, they feel similar to perks as well. And so then the calculation becomes, okay, it's 60 bucks for 12 different mission boards, probably 13 or 14, depending upon the stretch goals, etc. Maybe even 15. I don't know. Let's say 15 to make it a nice easy number. So you're only paying four bucks per mission scenario, and that actually might feel really good to play through, right? A print and play on Kickstarter is like four bucks, so you can kind of justify it in that regard. It's five bucks if it's 12 and it stays at 12. And so I actually think the price on missions feels really reasonable for what you're getting, but I also think it's worth pointing out that I, I don't think what you're getting, you will return to as much as you do in the base game. Again, that case being made for dice thrown itself being the best iteration versus missions. This is just what I'm supposing, having looked at the video and being a Dice Throne fan and can envision it myself. So that's enough of that. Moving along to number two. Number two is you should be really cognizant about what's coming out at retail. I mentioned a little bit uh, earlier about the battle chest. Surprised, actually, that you don't see a picture of the battle chest up here, but I'm sure we can find it here. The Marvel Dice Throne Battle Chest. All of the seasons have had their own battle chests, right? You have Marvel Dice Throne, Dice Throne Season 1, Dice Throne Season 2, and the only difference between the battle chests and what you get at retail is that they all come in one box. All eight characters, they're really nicely made. It is really nice to have all of eight of your characters in one box versus having just these little two packs. If you know you like the game and you, knew, you know you want to have that variability, it's nice just to be able to have a box on the shelf, boop, pull out, open it, and hand out the characters. Super easy, super slick, really well made, nice having it all in one box. That is a reason for sure to get this at this level, to get this $99 purchase price. However, because Dice Throne has partnered with the op for retail distribution, you know it's going to be pretty widely available. And if it is pretty widely available, there's a chance that you can get it for cheaper down the line or parceled 
at different points down the line, right? It's kind of like your own stretch pay to see if you really are inter interested in the system. I always say, if you think you're interested in the system, go out and pick up a two pack, right? There are so many two packs, 30 bucks. I, I got the Dice Throne Santa versus Krampus two pack and I am so freaking excited. I cannot wait. I'm so happy they're in my collection. But that's a possibility, right? You can go, you can grab a pack of two, you can see how they play. They'll generally be good for each other. And then maybe you get another two pack and another two pack. What's really great about the Marvel one, and maybe it's not on this store, is that they have this lovely four pack of heroes, right? Four pack of heroes, 52, 53 bucks Canadian. You save on the shipping. Again, Dice has good shipping. But you save a couple bucks this way by kind of parceling it out. If you compare to what like the aftermarket prices are, you can see they're selling the Champions Additional Battle Chest for $210, or you can just add them up together, paying a dollar more <laughs> for Doctor Strange and Black Widow, strangely, on Board Game Bliss. And that price is much cheaper than the aftermarket for a larger battle chest together. Because there aren't like significant, significant exclusives, if you're not getting missions, if you are getting missions, they're throwing in. I just saw when we were down here at the stretch goals, they've already thrown in the Sauron mission. They're going to throw in the Green Goblin mission. But if you're not getting this additional stuff or this additional bling, if you're not getting all the minis with it, if you're not getting like the extra tokens, etc., you can wait until retail and you can be fine and you can get half the characters and also feel good about getting and slowly building up your collection. I just think retail is such a significantly affordable option here that it is one that should be very much considered in a way that sometimes Kickstarter, you shouldn't consider it, but because of the wide distribution, because of the, there's going to be availability, because people love Dice Throne, I think that ultimately might be the better choice. If you're not going to get the Deadpool riding on a unicorn playmat at the same time, which really should be a dice tray. Like, I don't know why they haven't made a Deadpool dice tray. A real missed opportunity. If you're not bundling all that stuff and the extras, I don't, I don't know if right now is the right call. I think retail is just fine. The retail production quality is just fine. You only lose having access to them in a big box. And you know what? You can get yourself a big box. You can get yourself a big old box and put all of your 24 characters, 26 characters in there right now. Oh, wait, no, 34 characters, because that's the total, which also brings us to our number one. You have too many Dice Throne characters already. I have 16 characters, and I want more. Even just scrolling through, scrolling through this and the heroes and clicking on the ninja and me going, oh, I haven't played the ninja. I haven't played the treant, because I just had the base season one. I haven't played gunslinger or samurai or tactician or or the huntress or the cursed pirate or the artificer or the seraph or the vampire lord come on i haven't played any of those and i want to but i also recognize that for the frequency that i end up getting dice thrown to the table 16 characters is so much it's more than enough i also hope and don't want you to take my comments about bundling everything together as your excuse to Oh, well, Chris said you need to bundle it all together. Let's go completely all in and spend $817? Are you kidding me? On everything? Wh why? No playmats, though. Oh, no playmats. No playmats in that bundle. Card sleeves for Marvel Dice Throne. Card sleeves, Marvel Dice Throne, X-Men. What is in all the all-in? I'm getting really derailed here with my point. Oh, at least you get the Marvel Battle Chest. And then you just get a bunch of acrylic tokens and promo packs that you don't need. And sleeves. Although, to be fair, the sleeves, I have the sleeves for Santa and Krampus, and they're actually pretty cool because I got the different art on the back. It doesn't matter. That's not, that's not the point. We're getting off track here. Stop it. Stop it. You are the, supposed to be the voice of restraint, and you're not doing a good job. Let's talk about the heroes. Yeah, let's come back to me so we can talk about the heroes. Um, realistically, though, how often do you play Dice Throne? How many heroes do you need? How many is too many? That's the conversation that we need to have. Uh, it was too many heroes when it was Marvel Dice Throne, and now it's even more heroes. And I know the heroes look cool. I love the little tricks that they add in. But all of the Dice Throne heroes are always going to look cool. They're always going to feel unique. And that's part of the joy of the game. But for me personally, and the frequency at which I play this game, and the frequency at which it hits the table, I haven't 
gotten the joy and the knowledge and I, I haven't gotten everything I can out of all these characters. I haven't. I just want the new ones because they are new and shiny. That isn't a good enough reason to do it. If you do, if you are getting the value out of it, if you are getting this game to the table and you are playing it a whole bunch, that's, that's so much better. That's a much better reason to do it. But I feel, I know I feel, and I'm not alone in this, the allure of the new and the shiny. We are so focused on the new and the shiny that we forget to play with what we have, and we forget that the system is designed to be replayable, even in two-character pack. And so if you really haven't exhausted all of your characters, and you feel like, ah, I'll never play this again because these characters are so boring, then I don't think you should get it. And if you also feel that way, I don't think you should get it. Yeah, I don't think you should get it in both ways. Because if you think the system's boring, well, one, you're wrong, and two, it's going to be the same system. And so if your attention span can only deal with the system when you are dealing with a new and a shiny and you aren't able to appreciate it for its back and forth interplay then i don't know if there's justification enough to just get the new and shiny no matter how cool all the characters look so there you go those are my five reasons you shouldn't back i don't know if this one was good enough honestly i don't know if i talked you up out of it enough but what I, what i what i can say is that i am not backing Marvel X-Men Dice Throne. I'm not. I'm very happy with my existing characters. I'm very happy with those. I I was going to find it hard to justify getting Santa versus Krampus because there are two more characters and I have 14 characters and how many characters do you really need? And I was telling myself these things, but they also they just look so fun and you can play them at Christmas time. But the main one for me, the main things is that are stopping me backing or spending that money because it's not an insignificant sum of money. It's 100 bucks. It's more than 100 bucks when you factor in shipping. It's like 110. That's not insignificant. And so what's stopping me is that I already have so much content for the game that I enjoy and have the ability to explore further. And so that's what I'm going to try to do. And I just didn't think that Marvel Missions was compelling enough in the sketch that I saw to want, want to play. I, I like playing Dice Throne the way I like to play it. I like the head-to-head -head nature of it. That's how I will do it. And missions doesn't make me want to deviate from that. It, it kind of felt similar to the Santorini expansion, the, the campaign expansion, where there's just a bunch of puzzles. And yeah, sure, if you want to go through and you play the bunch of puzzles, that's fine. And I think this Marvel Missions will be more co-op than the bunch of puzzles in Santorini. But I'd just rather play the version of my game that I like and then play another more robust, different co-op system for my co-op time. So I'm not backing. I, and I feel very happy in that not backing. And I really highly recommend, if you haven't played Dice Throne before, I highly, highly recommend to just get one of those two packs of characters. And then pick the other characters that, that look cool and get a two pack. And then maybe get a four pack of something else down the line. Mix and match, right? For that same price, you could get two characters from season one that look cool, two characters from season two that look cool, the four pack of Marvel, characters which are some of my favorite characters in there they all kind of made my top five i think with thor loki scarlet witch and miles morales it's a friggin great pack and then maybe down the line get uh, a two pack of this whatever gambit's in probably gambit and rogue i don't know what the breakdown is going to be but leave gene gray and cyclops for last just because eh. sorry james marsden i like your work but it's okay so yeah did i do it did I convince you? Did I make you want it more? I don't even know. I really, I really don't know about this one, and I'm sorry if I let you down. But I'm trying to remove myself and my own enthusiasm from it and try to look at it objectively and realize that it isn't for everybody. It certainly isn't for everybody as much as I wish it was. And so recognizing when you're going to get the value out of it and when not, I think is important. So drop in the comments down below if you are backing and why, and also if you're not backing and why, because I always find it's lovely to get a whole community of comments down there to make me regret every single choice I've ever made in my life. Thanks for being here. My name is Chris George, and I do not have a catchphrase, but I really, you know what? I've changed my mind. I need to back it so I can get that metal curmudgeon token, just so that I can have it as a prop for every one of these videos. Oh, this is a real catch-22 because I want it. I want it as a prop for every video, and yet I would have to, I would have to break my streak if i did i'll think about that more <laughs> but for now there you go some dice 
Thanks, Roland, to finish us off.